Good afternoon, this video is about color interpolation again. I think a lot of people are expecting a video about Dolby Vision, but I can't get to it until I thoroughly understand the issue of color interpolation. Originally, I wanted to tell you and show you why there is a difference when capturing, which I discovered while working on previous videos. But in the process, I found so much new information for myself that I decided that I had to expand on the subject. This information will give you a better understanding of the whole process of color formation on your TV screen. On the Decklink Capture card which I use for testing, there is a difference in the image of different players. More precisely, there is a shift of colors. Players that output in 444 mode produce greener images, they have a shift visible towards the green channel. All players that output images in 422 mode have a shift towards the red violet color. The Shield TV using the 422 output still has the same shift towards the green channel as the 444 output. If you switch a player that outputs in 444 mode to 422 output mode, it will output as players that use 422 mode. So for example I can make an X2 cube into a player with the same shift towards green yellow if I switch the output to 444 mode. I always do analyses based on charts and in my videos I said that such small deviations in colors can't be seen with the eyes. But I was wrong, you can, in certain images you can see it. Especially on faces. Why this shift occurs in the first place? The thing is that the capture card uses the 422 recording format. But when the 444 signal is fed from the player, to preserve more color information it does a linear interpolation from 444 to 422. But, Shield TV first converts video to 422, then to 444, apparently by the bilinear method, although it looks more like the Hermit algorithm and probably then to RGB, and then does the reverse procedure. From RGB we get 444, and then internally by the linear method makes 422 to the output, so it has a shift towards the green channel, like the Dune when outputting in 444 10 bits. It's just that for players that output in 444 this linear interpolation procedure was done by the capture card, while Shield TV did this process internally. Interestingly, the X2 cube uses linear interpolation to interpolate from 420 to 422, just like the Shield TV, but it has no shift. Probably because it's an augmentation process and the 422 isn't secondary compressed, it goes on to processing in this form, both on the capture card and in your TV. Likewise, if I test with MADVR, doing bilinear interpolation from 420 to 444, I also don't see a shift. Unfortunately without accurate data, it's hard to know who's really to blame, but one thing is clear, converting from 444 to 422 using linear interpolation gives a shift in the green-yellow color range. I even think all players inside always do a full restoration to 444. But because they use the nearest neighbor method, they can easily return it to 422 without changing or distorting the image. But, Shield TV can't do that. The shift is minimal, I didn't notice it with my eyes, only saw it on the graphs. But I could still see this difference when I made the export from the movie Back to the Future to a PNG file. If you quickly switch between photos, you can see this difference, you can see it in the red colors and in the faces and the colors are quite saturated. But my six-year-old daughter sees the difference in different videos when switching between images in the same DaVinci. I do not see it, I can only tell from the graphs that there is a shift. Therefore, male persons are unlikely to notice this shift, because we are different from women in this respect, and even more so from female children, we are worse at distinguishing shades of colors. And once again, if we set all players to the same output mode 444 or vice versa 422, all players will give an identical image even on the decklink card. Except, Shield TV. That said, you can't actually use 444 mode on the Shield TV, 
it can only output 4448 bit. It is unlikely that you will use it in this mode. Looking ahead, Dolby Vision always outputs in 422 12-bit mode and besides, it has a completely different processing and output principle. Therefore, as you understand, all players in this mode should be identical in color interpolation, but there are other processes interfering with the image, so there will still be a difference, but in other image parameters. To figure it out, I started doing the capture on a Magul Pro Capture 4K Plus card, which knows how to capture video in 444 mode. I was finally able to figure it out and get it to produce results, though there are limitations with the V410 codec, which is what records in 4.4.4 10-bit format. No professional video editing software understands this format. My salvation was virtual dub and conversions to other formats with 4.4.4 color. What conclusions I could get from capturing in 4.4.4 mode? First, it makes no sense to capture in 4.4.4 format for players that output 4.2.2. If you capture 422 video into the codec V410 then the capture card itself chooses the nearest neighbor for interpolation and records in this form. But if you choose the codec like V210, which is equal to 422, then in the player you can choose in the same MAD VR what method to interpolate from 422 into 444. In fact, as well as when capturing in 422 on Decklink. Second, all players except Shield TV use the nearest neighbor method to interpolate from 422 to 444. Third, interpolation from 420 to 422 is done by different methods on different players. X2 Cube uses linear interpolation, Shield TV probably too. Dune and Fire TV Stick 4K uses a different method, probably cubic. Couldn't determine exactly. Fire TV Max uses nearest neighbor for both stages of interpolation. Shield TV uses linear, actually bilinear, because it is the same on both planes. Fourth, and most important, when capturing in 444 format, there is no difference in colors between the players. The output in 422 that output in 444 gives approximately the same image and there is no shift in colors only the horizontal interpolation method effects. Except again the Shield TV has a shift toward green-yellow, as does the Decklink card capture, but interestingly it is a bit less noticeable. Here's a look at the 444 capture. There's a nice face here, on a gray neutral background. So it's convenient to notice the difference. You see the only difference here is Shield TV. There is a slight color shift. What else is good about the nearest neighbor method is that it works both ways. We can do lossless first from 422 to 444 and then return 444 video to 422 format. There will be no difference between the images. But the other way around will not work naturally and 444 to 422 and back to 444 will not work anymore. There is some more interesting information, as you understand purely theoretically, the most primitive processing in Fire TV Max. The method of the nearest neighbor in the same Fire TV Max creates a simple image, with obvious defects in the form of streaks, angular, with clear color transitions, due to which he has a minimum of new shades created and that is why. His chart's the brightest, because the more pixels of one color, the more brightness in the charts. It's also quite possible that for our eyes, it's the simple image that will seem clearer and more pleasing. I decided to see if the shift would be visible on the LG CX TV. I ended up doing a series of tests and analysis. I could not get 100% reliable results. All players are plus or minus identical on the graphs. It's impossible to accurately determine if there's a shift or not. And there are several reasons for that. OLED TV is not able to give accurate colors, at least mine, because of the residual image. The current image always depends on the previous image, of course not very much. 
but if a couple of seconds before the current image hangs a static picture, it will affect the colors of the future image. This is the reason why I had to redo the tests on the TV several times, because I got different results every time. So, I had to make a tricky test file to get rid of the memory effect. I had to first warm up the matrix with color noise before each test. At the end of which I already had the images I wanted. But, even in this case, if I took a picture from the TV for example for Shield TV in 422 format, then make tests of the other players, it all takes time and if after 45 minutes I reconnect Shield TV, I get already another result, visible on the graph is a slight deviation from the original version. And it turns out, it is impossible to reliably take a photo of the screen, when you need to identify such a small color shift. Based on the data, I think that the TV, if the signal is in 422 format, probably just let it go on, if 444, then compresses it with a linear algorithm, then processing and again outputs, unfortunately it is impossible to determine it. Although it is possible that the signal is fully restored to 444 by the nearest neighbor, if the original for 22. In any case, for players that interpolate to 444 as the nearest neighbor, there is no difference with 422. And it is because of the extra processing that the difference between the players is evened out. Perhaps this is the second reason why I could not detect a clear difference between the players. It was impossible to accurately detect color deviations. Moving on. What if we do not interpolate with the media player at all, but just use it as a transport? See, this seems like a logical step, the player takes the file and sends it to the TV in its original form without using interpolation, and the TV already makes from 420 first 422 and then 444. In fact, in this mode, we should get a great result, and most importantly, all players will be completely identical, it's logical, if there is no interpolation in the processing, then there should be no difference. Yes, there is a minus that you can only get 420 output mode at 50 and 60 Hz output, but it will be the best picture quality. Because everything will be done by the TV itself. Do you agree that this is ideal? I thought so too at first, until I ran tests on the capture card and on the TV. Turns out that when you output 420, you're actually doing a double conversion, first, your player does the conversion to 422 and then the player compresses it to 420. Because on the capture card I see a signal in 420 which is similar to a signal in 422 for an X2 cube for example. And then the TV once again undergoes this video conversion from 420 to 422 and then to 444. As a result, this output can be considered the worst in terms of image quality, because there are a lot of unnecessary transformations, probably, such a mode of output in 420 was made due to the need for the chip to overlay the GUI and all internal processing, it just cannot output directly to the original for 420 stream. So these are the results. But no, this mode of output is definitely the worst option. Now I will show you the results of different players with different models of TVs. As well as the work of built-in players of different TVs, these are LG CX and LG C2 built-in players. Next, the Philips OLED 806 and LG CX embedded players. And these are LG C2 plus Dune and LG CX plus Dune. And here is the LG C2 Plus Dune versus the Philips 806 Plus Dune. I will not judge who is better here, still need more reliable data for analysis. When sending the signal to the TV, it is the TV that will be responsible for the conversion from 422 to 444. Because of the use of the nearest neighbor, the signal output in 444 format is not different from the 422 format for all players except Shield TV, if you compare the image on the TV, Shield TV has a difference between 444 and 422. 
but it is so minimal that it is only visible on the test tables it should still be sought, this difference. In fact, no matter how cool your video processor is in the player, when it hits the TV, your image will turn from 444 to 422, and then back to 444 again, but by the TV's algorithms. Therefore, it is the quality of the TV interpolation that will affect the image. At the same time, as you understand from 420 to 422 the player does the processing. In fact, to really change the interpolation quality of the image, you only need to use the TV as a monitor panel. And most importantly, the effect of the color interpolation method has many times less impact on the resulting image than you might think. Next, a little bit about Sony. This Sony X85, the model without the extra chip, actually behaves like a regular MediaTek. And this is the Sony X95, which has an additional XR processing chip. An interesting picture, the colors are inverted. Instead of the red and blue channel as in the source, we see blue and orange. If you think this is a mistake, no, here is a picture from a Sony A80J TV. And even from an external player, we see this color inversion. This is the work of the XR chip, but no need to worry, the colors are actually processed correctly on regular movies. The problem lies in the work of this chip with this non-standard part of the image. There is a glitchy brightness channel in this file. I think the reason is this. Normal video chips that work in YCBCR mode don't notice the problem with it. Because they process the video separately for each channel, separately for the brightness, separately for the color difference channels. Shield TV also stumbles on this video, but it doesn't change colors, it just merges the luminance channel image with the color channels, doing the conversion apparently to RGB. But the XR chip works after receiving an image from the MediaTek chip. Then XR probably converts it into a color space in which it does further processing, at the end the matrix is fed RGB signal. It is somewhere in the processing stage XR chip this defect occurs. Unfortunately, I cannot find anything about the principle of this chip processing, as well as other video chips. No one wants to make the datasheet publicly available. The only thing I really knew about this chip was M-Logic. Everything else I could learn, it was a long more than a month of daily work, hundreds of videos and images from capture cards to understand the principle, check the theory, etc. All the principles I have described here and the reasoning apply in this case to the LG TV. Probably other brands of TVs use processing in other ways, other algorithms, or rather can use them. So another conclusion, I quite admit that on some televisions you will see a difference between players that give out either 422 or 444. But I'm sure if you compare players at the same output settings, for example both players at 422 or both at 444, you won't be able to see any difference in colors. Bottom line, as I've told you 100 times before, the entire difference is due to the output algorithm and the TV processing algorithms. This is probably the end of the topic of interpolation. I hope that you were able to learn something new and useful for you and my work was not in vain. Because this was probably the most difficult for me video. Thank you for watching it and goodbye.